it says, let's make this easy, okay? Let's go back to Exodus. That way I don't have y'all going backwards. Let's go to Exodus chapter 19 and verse 14. And then we'll come back to Psalms. That makes it easier. Exodus chapter 19, the very second book of the Bible. Chapter 19, verse 14. Are you there? Amen. Amen. It reads, and Moses went down from the mountain unto the people and sanctified the people and they were washed and they washed their clothes. Amen. Amen. Psalms 51 and verse 7 says, purge me, this is David, clean, needs to clean me with hyssop. That's a cleaning agent. Amen. Amen. Ajax, uh, uh, kitchen cleanser, Tide, uh, you know, some, some, uh, some cleaning agent. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. He's talking to the Lord. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Psalms 51 verse 10 says, create in me a clean heart. O oh God, and renew a right spirit in me. I want to talk about for a few minutes, it's time to clean the house. It's time to clean the house. Again, happy Mother's Day to everybody. Uh, it's time to clean the house. You, you, you may take that several different ways, but... Uh, I'm talking about this house, this temple of God that God has given us, allowed us time uh, to live in. Because you got to know that at some day, at some point in time, we are going to exodus this body. Amen. And because the reality is we are supernatural. We are immortal. We are living in a mortal body. And this house, the Bible says, when this earthly tabernacle is dissolved, we have a building. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not made by the hands of man, but yeah. eternal yeah. in the heavens. We are, we are God in flesh. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. And we're living in a body that it, we need to clean it every now and then. Yeah. And yeah. Even the scripture says that God does not dwell in an unclean temple. But he calls this the temple of God. So I encourage you to start to clean your temple, clean your house. Ask the Holy Ghost to help you to clean out everything that is not right. They came up with a song that says, Lord, if you, fi if you find anything that shouldn't be taken out and strengthen me. But I got good news for you. It's not an if, it's when you find it. Because all have sinned, the text says, ain't nobody better than nobody. Tell your neighbor, you ain't better than me. They may look better than you, they may dress better than you, but they're no better than you. Amen. From me to the back door to the people outside. Amen. We are all the same in God's eyes. You got to take care of you and you have to take care of your body as well. Amen. What do I mean? There are two distinctions. You got to take care of you. Amen. Take care of your mind. Amen. A lot of times we become uh, so inundated uh, uh, with uh, helping other people. Always being there for the less fortunate. Being there for our family, our friends, our husbands, our wives, our children, our neighbors, our co-workers or whatever. And sometimes... Don't take time out for you. Amen. You have to take time out for you. Amen. You have to. When I was in school, we had something called recess. It was a time where we got away from the academ academics and we got to play. Yeah. And then we went from recess to gym. Yeah. So we got to play again. Yeah. It's all I'm trying to say. Sometimes you got to take recess. You have to bag away in your mind, bag 
break away from the things that trouble you, that burden you down, that cause you to be carried away with worry and frustration and aggravation. You gotta find a hiding place, a respite. You gotta find some recess. A time where in my mind I can go, and a good place to go is to the Lord. Meditate on Him. I find more comfort in just meditating on God and thinking about God than just telling Him what I want. He already knows what I need. Just like you know what your child needs, the Lord knows what you need. He already knows your problems did not catch God by accident. He saw that before he built you, before he made you, before he created you. And you don't have to ask God to give you more faith because God has already given you enough faith to conquer any situation you will ever encounter. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. So therefore, I need to stand strong in who God made me to be. And he calls me to be victorious. Tell your neighbor, I am victorious. I am victorious. In all things. But you have to say that until you believe it because we've had some failures and some upsetting moments and some disappointing times. And sometimes we can look at our life and think we've had more failures than success. But I came to give you good news. If that was the case, you wouldn't be here. So the reality is your good days outweigh your bad days. So as the song says, you really should not complain. Because things can get better. Are you hearing me? You got to take care of your mind. Be careful about what you think. Philippians 4 and 8 says... Think on these things, what sort of things are kind, what sort of things are pure, what sort of things are lovely, what sort of things are true, what sort of things are of a good report. Think on those things when people bring you crazy conversations. Don't even include yourself. Don't even deal with it. Don't accept it. And don't don't feel uh, 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 obligated to entertain somebody else's foolishness. No, I'm not obligated to do that. Are you hearing me? There's a saying that says, failure to plan on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part. It's not my fault you're in trouble, but you want me to get you out of trouble all the time. I can't get no help. You mess around, you can't sleep, you can't eat, you can't do nothing, you can't think straight. You mess it up because your mind is clogged with stuff that has no business in your mind. You got to take care of you. And then you got to take care of your body, the body that you live in. Amen. Amen. You got to be careful about what you eat. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. A, 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 a Polish, a, a, every now and then, ain't bad. <laughs> Amen. A, 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 a Italian beef dipped with hot peppers and sweet peppers and cheese, with mozzarella, American cheese, whatever you want on it. It ain't bad every now and then. But sometimes you got to settle for the Julian salad. Sometimes you got to settle for the, for, the, for the fruit. Sometimes, y'all are hearing me. So I can't get no advance right now. Because y'all think, y'all better think about what you're going to eat. And it's not going to be some, some rabbit food, y'all are talking about. But you got to take care. You got to drink more water, flush your kidneys and your liver. Y'all not hearing me. Amen. You got to take care of your body. You got to exercise, stretch in the morning. Stretch before you go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. I wish y'all could, I wish y'all could see me. Y'all looking at me. You asking for a lot, Pastor. I want your body to be healthy. Just like the Bible says, present your body as a living sacrifice. God can't use a crippled, broke down body. He needs you to be functional. He needs you to be ready to go. Amen. Understand, I, I've got to a point in my life sometimes, every now and then, not all the time, but every now and then, I open my car door and I have to think about how I'm going to get out. <laughs> when I was young, I used to just hop out the car, but not going to do that. Hold on. I ain't looking for the cars. I'm trying to figure out how do I want to get out this car. Because my body ain't feeling right today. Amen. But I talked to my body. I said, get yourself together. Amen. Let's go. We got work to do. You got to take care of you and take care of your body. If you expect to do the things that you need to do in your life and for God. Three things I want to talk about, and I'm going to get out your way so y'all can finish having a wonderful Mother's Day. Number one, you ought to sweep, mop, and vacuum. 
I'm going to keep it real, 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 real simple. So what is he talking about? Sweep, mop, and vacuum. Why is that necessary? Because the reality is that every floor in your house is not the same. Every space in your life is not the same. Lord, help me work this day. Some floors in the house just need sweeping. I can sweep it up and get all the dust up, and it's good. There's some things in my life that I surface. There's some surface stuff that I really don't have to do. I don't have to be bothered with the easy things I can get rid of. Yeah, yeah. And we always we offer those up to God. God take this away. God take that away. We always tell God to take the easy stuff. We don't want to take the hard stuff because we now understand that for God to take the hard stuff from me, I got to really participate. Because the Bible says faith without works is dead. So when you, when you say, God, I got faith, in other words, you're telling them, God, I'm ready to go to work. Amen. And most times we say, I got faith for the easy stuff because the hard stuff we pray and ask him to do for us because we don't want to put in the word. Tell you, baby, you got to put in the word. And then when you wonder why some folk get more than you got, well, how did they get this and how did they get that? I'm here all the time. I pay my tithes. I'm at every church all the time. I do this. I do that. Because they put more work in than you did. You spent more times on your knees, even in your mind, complaining and begging God to do something that he's telling you, you got to do that yourself. I'm going to help you when you get up. Well, I can't hear God talking. Yeah, you don't want to hear God talking. Because God's telling you, listen, I will help you when you get started. He told Moses to leave his house and, and leave your house and go. Well, where I'm going to go, Father God, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you as you go. You just get up and leave. Can you imagine God telling you to leave your house? Can you imagine God wake up one morning, Lord, you heard Lord clearly. Leave your house and never come back. You go. What? I, I was. It must be residue from the dream I had. I can't be God. I got a mortgage on this house. I'm not going to leave my house and I stuff in there. God says, leave your house. They don't ever come back. Most of us don't have a conversation with God. But that's what he told Moses to leave. So you've got to be able to understand when God is talking to you. The easy stuff, when we sweep, you can sweep that stuff up and get that out the way because it's easy, it's simple, it's surface stuff. We like to offer that up. We like to quit. You know what? I'm, I'm going to fast uh, for, you know, church, we fasted for 21 days for Lent. Well, I'm going to give God three days. He knows my heart. He does know your heart. That's the problem. Are you hearing me? Surface stuff. We like to give up. But some floors, you can't just sweep. You got to sweep and mop. Yeah, somebody working with me. You got to sweep, sweep and mop. Why? Because even though I got the surface stuff up, when I got it up, I saw that the floor was stained with some things that should not be. And a lot of us come to church. You know a lot of us leave church and we say, oh, I can't go back to church. They hurt me at church and they did this and they talked about me. Oh, what, in other words, what you are seeing are the stains on people's lives. And people bring their stains with them. You take you everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. And you really have folk looking for a perfect church. And I tell people, like my dad said, whenever you find the perfect church, you do the church a favor. Don't join. Because the moment you join, it will no longer be perfect. Do you know the more people around, the more chances you are to get yourself wrapped up in some trouble? The more spirits there are. You got to be focused. To be around a whole lot of people and still hear the word of the Lord. You got to be focused to be around a lot of people and still worship and pray. It's easy to do it by yourself or if you got a prayer partner. But the more people you get, the more likelihood of the minds are going to be divided. The issues, the concerns are going to be individualized. And it's hard to focus in the spirit realm when all this stuff is going on. People are stained with their problems. Somebody had a flat tire. 
Somebody got locked out the house. Yeah. Somebody cut somebody out. Yeah. I mean, stuff on your mind. Yeah. Stain. Yeah. Stuff you see. And things people see. Yeah. They see the stains on your life because we carry them. Yeah. I wouldn't know what was going on with you if you wouldn't show it on your face all the time. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong with me. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with me. You showing me the stain. <laughs> so maybe you need to mop. <laughs> maybe you need to mop. Get, get, get you some uh, 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 mopping glow or something. Put it in the water. Mop yourself. Clean your purge me with this. Even get them stains off you because you showing me all these things. Why didn't you come to church yesterday? I, I couldn't get my hair done. Spain. <laughs> Why didn't you come out to eat with us? I just, I couldn't find none nowhere. Spain. <laughs> I was coming to church and my, my husband made me so mad, I just, it just took, took Jesus all out of me. Spain. <laughs> I think y'all get it. One excuse after another. And we, what? On Facebook, I refuse to be bothered with ignorant people and people who don't appreciate me. I, I'm just through with y'all. Stay. We like to put our feelings out in the public. Because we're looking for some comment. We're looking for some, 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 some validators. If we don't get at least five, we repost it again. <laughs> some of us need to mop. Yeah. Problem is, some of our parents ain't taught us how to mop. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wish I could get some help. So when you ain't learned how to clean, when your parent didn't teach you, at least we was little, they taught us the Lord's Prayer. I probably ain't prayed that prayer since I was a kid, but they taught us the Lord's Prayer. They taught us to say grace before the dinner. They taught us to say our prayers before, bless mama, bless daddy. I, my, my grandfather was the pastor of the church, and every first Sunday, see, we have first Sunday, we have communion, we go home. See, when I was coming up, we have communion service, and it was at 6 o'clock in the evening, you came back to church. And Reverend G.F. Powell, my grandfather, would preach our whole sermon. And the choir would sing. And we have baptized. And we have communion. And he would go down the road. If you can talk, you're going to testify. Mm. Oh, y'all not hearing me. He would say, bless, bless, uh, God bless my parent. Oh, you had to open your mouth. He'd teach you how to testify. We haven't been taught a lot of things. So a lot of us carry a lot of stains in our life because we've in the world and we've gotten stained by people by our own negative or shallow thinking and the problem is no one has taught us how to clean ourselves or how to allow the Holy Spirit to wash us white as snow as the scripture says. So some of us need to sweep and mop. I got to hurry. I said I was going to be finished in there. Got the sweet anima. But see, it's some folk, we got some embedded, hidden agendas. Some stuff way down inside of us. Hurt from 20 years ago. You still holding on to grudges and things that somebody did to you when you was in high school. Are you kidding me? I just ain't been the same. Uh, left me standing at the altar. I'm glad you left me. I don't want nobody that don't want me. I ain't mad. Listen, I'm gonna have my text, so I'm going out by myself with my tux. Take my boys with me. We're gonna have a good time. Some of us need to be vacuumed. Because some of our stuff get deep down. Yeah. Some of us ain't sculpted. Some of us, <laughs> some of us are 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 are, are, are uh, what to call uh, 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 what to call it uh, 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 in not industrial carpet like this carpet. It's it's uh, 
indoor outdoor carving. There you go. We 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 it's, we get that stuff. We ain't got no depths to us. We shallow anyway. So we can take a regular sh uh, uh, sharp vacuum cleaner and get that up. Then some of us we like sculpture carving. We got some crevices and. And, and grooves in us, and, and we think we're doing something because we look good. We, you know, we got some fashion to us. I got swag. But you got some issues going on, even from your childhood, or, or relationship problems, or a God problem. And my mama died, and you mad at God for the rest of your life. Well, let me help you. You're going to be mad again because you're going to die. You're going to be mad a lot of times. That's the cycle of life. So some of us, you know, you, you need a, 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 a heavier vacuum cleaner. You might need a hoover or something to, to get in between them cracks. And some of us are shag carpet. We, we will groan and can't nobody tell us nothing. Are y'all hearing me? That's when the Lord has to pull out his Kirby on you. <laughs> <laughs> we carry a lot of stuff that we don't have to carry. And God has to dig deep sometimes to pull out some things that we just won't let go. And somewhere in our mind, the devil has convinced us that it's a badge to carry. It's something good. It's a flag to wave, but it's not. It's hindering you and crippling you from being that good and faithful servant. It's preventing you from walking upright before the Lord. It's keeping you from seeing how great God is in your life because all you can see is all the hurt and the despair and the disappointment that's happened to you. So what? You didn't finish high school. So what? You can always go back if you want. But that doesn't define your life. But you will allow people to tell you you ain't got no education. I don't need an education to be intelligent. There's two different things. I ain't got time to deal with it. I'm not saying don't get an education. But sometimes things happen. But you don't let life or allow people to push you down, to put their foot on you, and make you think you are not worthy of anything. God loves you so much. Amen. I hope I'm helping somebody. So sometimes you got to sweep, mop, and vacuum in your life. Let God work it out for you. Now comes his next task because we're cleaning our house. Okay. Uh, somebody say, take out the trash. Take out the trash. You'd be surprised with the people that have a hard time of letting go. Relationships they shouldn't be in mm -hmm. because they can't let go. Mm -hmm. It's toxic, mm -hmm. it's useless, it's unproductive, mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you're not happy, mm -hmm. but you can't let it go. And I know why you can't let it go because you fear being over here by yourself. But I can't, I, t I need to help you. Do you know that's the best place to be sometimes? Yeah. I'm going to say this and I'm going to go to number next. You was born by yourself. Uh -huh. okay. You don't die by yourself. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with being by yourself in between sometimes. Yeah. You learn a lot of stuff when you're by yourself. Yeah. You learn more about who you are. A lot of times you might be the problem because you brought all that toxic stuff because you didn't sweep, mop, or vacuum and you brought your nervous self into another relationship. That house was clean. Oh, God, he's clean. The walls clean. The window seats clean. Ain't no dust nowhere. Look behind the refrigerator. It's clean. Took the top off the stove. It's clean. I think I'm going to stay here for a minute. 
But the problem is you can't handle an upgrade. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. You can't, you just saw an upgrade. Oh, I gotta come up. <laughs> but when they start encouraging you to clean yourself up. See, a dirty person and a clean person can't live together long. One of them got to go and one of them got to give. Are you with me? Even the scripture says that, that the believer shouldn't hang with an unbeliever or shouldn't argue with an angry person because eventually, if you, do, if you don't stop, you will end up doing what they do. So sometimes you got to take out the trash. And the Lord's like the garbage man. He comes around every now and then. Let's say on a Sunday. He comes around on a Sunday. He say, hey, Rick, can I take the trash from you? And you come to church. Lord, you can have this bag, but I don't know about that one. I ain't quite packed it in the bag yet. It's still sitting on the counter because you ain't cleaned up yet. You know, I still got them beans from last week. What do you think? You, we might want to throw them away. But my mama made them beans. I don't care who made the beans. They've been there sitting on the pot on the stove for a week. We get attached to this stuff. Some of us got stuff from our parents and grandparents. A rocking chair don't rock no more. But it's my grandmama's. That's nostalgic. You know, it make me think about my grandma. You need a chair to think about your grandma. You have relegated her down to a chair? Are you kidding me? Really? You have to take out the trash. And I, I, I dare you to ask God to start looking in your life. Start looking through your mind. Going through the rooms in your mind and say, God, whatever's in me, take it out. Yeah. Not if you find something. Because you got some trash up right there. Yeah. Which you haven't took out yet. I took out the trash in the kitchen, but what about the trash in the bathroom? What about the trash in your room? Mm. Some of us take the trash out and we put it in the garage because, well, it ain't time yet, so instead of taking it outside, and then we get busy. Oh, Mr. Garbage Man, now you got no trash. Because we were undisciplined. And we didn't want to let go things that are not good for us. Some of us can't stop smoking, can't stop drinking, can't stop cussing, can't stop lying. Can't stop being undisciplined with your money. Some of us don't need a check or a credit card. I heard somebody say, I can't have a credit card, that's the devil. What? That ain't the devil. You're the devil. Hey, no, the credit card didn't do nothing. You did that. I just don't do well with credit card. Well, say that. My father told me a joke one time about the guy that was writing checks. He was writing checks and writing checks and writing checks. And they ended up closing his bank account. And he went to the bank and asked him, well, why didn't you close my account? He said, because you write writing checks. You ain't got no money. He said, "You ain't no money in your account." He said, "Well, I didn't know. I still got checks. I thought it was okay." As long as I got checks, I go, "No, no, no, no." Somebody didn't teach you right. It always amazes me how people complain about the bills they made. You didn't think about that that you had to pay this bill when you went and bought that. Y'all listen. Yeah. Gotta clean our house. Gotta take out the trash. There's some ideas, some habits, some undisciplined behavior in our mind. We have to push out, not push to the side, not put on the shelf. Because, see, we know where that is. We go back to it. Right. Amen? Yeah. I tell folk all the time just because you got delivered, don't mean you don't know where it is. Amen. What do you mean, Apostle? Just because I don't fight anymore. God delivered me from busting people upside the head. But it don't mean I don't know how. 
I know exactly where it is. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't cussed in six months. Yeah. And God, don't, the devil going to try you just like he tried Jesus for 40 days. He going to try you and say, why are you trying me? Because, see, you started looking for it. I put that cuss word somewhere. Why did I put that? I, I'm looking for the right. I found thought, but I'm looking for the right cuss word. Y'all know. Them cussers. Y'all be looking for the You need the right. And then you got to string a few with it. To give it weight. Some folk got good at cussing, make folk cry when they cuss. Uh -huh. I thought you was a child of God. I am. Yeah. You took me where I wasn't supposed to go. I've been delivered, but I still know where it is. Yeah. It's logged up here somewhere. Yeah. Tell you that you gotta take out the trash. Yeah. You got a mop, you got a sweep, you got a vacuum in your life. Let God help you. You have to take out the trash in your life. But lastly, you got to wash the dishes. I'm going to change that. I'm going to switch that up. I'm going to switch that up. You got to wash your clothes. And your dishes. Because lazy folks, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't understand how, 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 how you got a dishwasher and you can't wash dishes. When I was growing up, I was the dishwasher. Yeah. My mom used to make me take, we didn't have no SOS pads. We, when I saw an SOS pad, I thought my mom and dad came up on some money. We, <laughs> we had a, a Brillo pad, you know, strung up your knuckles and stuff. And, and, and I wash it, and my mom would come in and get that black skill and go, Tell me what's this on the skillet. What's what on the skillet? All oh, this black stuff. I said, it's black. She says, no, this stuff come off. And she took the scraping stuff off. I go, oh my God. <laughs> get that stuff. You got to get all that stuff off. And we sit there and just, you know. I think that's when I started praying. <laughs> And I'm the oldest. If she said, my brother Xavier to iron, and he didn't iron right. She goes, tell him to iron this for me. I said, but Xavier's supposed to do that. Said, I know, just do it right. You iron better than he does. Do that anyway. And I'd be ironing, you know. I think that's why I don't mind ironing now. Yeah. I talk to the Lord while I'm ironing. Amen. 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 While I'm washing dishes. But now I got a dishwasher. And sometimes I expect the dishes to jump in there by themselves. <laughs> more convenience you get, the more lazy you get. But you gotta clean up. But you gotta wash them clothes too. You gotta wash those clothes. You gotta wash those clothes. And here's a problem. We like to throw everything. Again, we ain't been taught how to wash clothes. And when you talk the right way, then you don't want to take the time to wash clothes correctly. Let me help you if you've never been taught. Most of us take our clothes and just throw them in a washing machine, throw some powder in there, whatever it is, and cut it on and walk away. Tell you neighbor, that ain't how it works. See, the way I was taught, you take the dark clothes and you put them in this pile. Then you take the whites and put them in another pile. Then you take the colors and you put them in another pile. Yes. And you wash all three separately. Yes. So the colors or the dark ones don't fade into the whites. Amen. Amen. So the colors stay bright and colorful. Yes. And you don't put bleach on the dark ones. Mm -hmm. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Am I helping somebody? The question is, are you going to stay here long enough to clean your clothes? Did not the text said, let me go back, Exodus 19 and 14. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. Maybe that's why folk ain't washed their clothes because they ain't been sanctified. <laughs> Sanctified means to be set apart. Man, it's only 11.36. I'm on good time. 
To be sanctified is to be set apart for a particular work. Are you listening? Yeah, In reality, a screwdriver is sanctified from a pair of pliers. Yeah. They are both tools, but they're set aside to do a particular work. You cannot be a screwdriver, a, 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 a pair of pliers, trying to take out of a, out a screw when you need a screwdriver. It just won't work. You're going to end up stripping the top of it or can't grab it and you get frustrated. And a lot of us are frustrated because we don't want to be set apart. We don't want God to use us in the way he wants to use us. We want to be used the way we want to be used when we get ready to be used, when it's convenient for us. And we don't want to put the work in. And that's why a lot of times we don't, we don't go for broke with God. That's a lot of times why we don't ask God for major things because we've learned that the greater things we ask for, the more work we have to do. And why is that? Here's, here's the reason why. Because God doesn't need victory. He has no counterpart. He has no peer. He has no combatant. No one to come against him. Even when the devil came up, he had Michael to get him out. God never did anything. God has no challenger, so he has no reason to fight a war. He's already won everything that can possibly be tackled. All he wants from us is glory. Our praise. So he gives us the victory. He aligns himself with us so that we may have victory. And let me help you. You can't have a victory without a battle. That's right. Right now. Yeah. So a lot of us are, are in a victory deficit because we don't want to go through the fight. Yeah. All right. Just like the text says, the battle is not yours. Yeah. It's the Lord's. All I got to do is put myself in the way. I understand there are more that are with me than those that are against me, and I'm more than a conqueror. If you said that and meant it and not said it because it sounds good, you will find yourself being a victor, and it lifts your faith in God and your strength in God because I won again. Tell your name, I won again. I know it didn't look like he was going to win, but I won again. And you know what? It doesn't matter how many times the devil comes against me. I will win again because I come with the armies of the Lord. Yes. 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 I'm like David. I don't care how big Goliath is. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. When I was little, we used to be scared of the big people. The bullies sent me the bigger people. Until I started taking martial arts and I found out, I found out the bigger they are, the most spaces I got to hit. I said, well, that's good. You can be eight feet tall, I got most space to hit. And the bigger you are, the, 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 the worse your center of gravity is. You got to bend over to hit me. And I learned if you bend over, you lost your balance and your sense of gravity, so you fall into my territory. Come on down here to where I am. So I like fighting giants. It's to my favor. So I got to wash my clothes. And some of my, my clothes are white clothes. That's the good part of me. I, I, I like, I, I wear them all the time. That's my front. That's what I show people, my good parts. That's how I got in my life, my good parts. I show them my good parts. I didn't show the bad parts, and she might not say I do. Show them the good parts. I eased in the colors, and I went to the dogs, and it's, you know. I can't get no help. Most folks don't show their dog clothes up front. They crazy, huh? You want me to do what? When? Where? No, you need Jesus. But you gotta treat your life. People in your life can be colors. They can be people in your life that bring you joy. The bright colors. Are you listening? How do you handle them? How do you deal with them? 
Versus the folk that are the dark colors, folk that get on your nerves. But you can't just kick them aside because I, I need these black pants. I, I can't just throw them away. I got to deal with them too. Yeah. I just deal with them in a, in a different way. Yeah, are you listening? Yeah. But they are meaningful in my life. Do you know folk that make you angry and upset and frustrated are meaningful in your life? Had it not been for them, you wouldn't pray. Had it not been for them, you wouldn't be more disciplined. Had it not been for them, you wouldn't be a better person. You wouldn't learn how to ignore foolishness You would, if you wouldn't have somebody being a fool in your life. Amen. You can learn from the crazy people just like you can learn from the good people. And in the meantime, you need to evaluate where you stand in the middle. <laughs> Am I half here and half there? Because we don't like to be we honest with ourselves, but we don't like to be honest with other people. Because when people find out who we really are, because first thing we do, we size up other people and their, 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 their haves and their have-nots. We size up what they like and what they don't like, who they are and who they're not. And we try to fit in But the question is, have you cleaned your clothes? And some of us would just walk into folks' lives with dirty clothes. You just got to take me the way I am. It is what it is. No, I don't have to take you just the way you are. And it ain't what it ain't. <laughs> Who you think you are? I'm me. Who you think I am going to deal with you is the question. Oh, you think you, this conversation, you think you're better than me? I never said that. You determined that all by yourself, that I was an upgrade from you. So if you want more time and attention from me, you got you to gotta wash some stuff. You got to clean up some stuff. Because I ain't got time to deal with that. Tell you what, I'll help you out. I'll give you some Tide Pods if you want. <laughs> I'll give you some bleach. I'll give you some, some, some fabric softener. i ain't even give you the little bees that you throw in the washing machine. Where the clothes smell good. Didn't come back and talk to me. Because if I keep hanging around you, that undisciplined, fouled, negative stench is going to get on me and I'm going to get stained. And folk can be looking, what happened to a pastor? He ain't acting the same. Because I got stains from other people. And folk would try to stain you if you let them. Amen. That's why I got some Holy Ghost stain guard. I spray on me. Because I know I got to deal with other folks' stuff all the time. That's my job. So I have to, first thing I do, I, I spray it in my mind. Lord, I keep my mind. I think the song says, so I don't think no evil. Keep my tongue so I don't speak no Oh yeah, I can think some evil stuff. I really can. I can think some real evil stuff. But the Lord don't let them thoughts come up. Most of the time. And when they do come up, he holds them at bay. Tell you can't do that. I know, but just one time. The Lord said, no, I got no, no. We got, we got to get this together. So he purges me and he washes me. So when I get to you, I'm as close as Jesus I'm going to get today. I don't hear me. See, I'm, I'm being real in that. Folk be walking around with their Bibles and, 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 and acting like they're all holy and don't know for high scriptures. <laughs> and the folk they know they messing them up. <laughs> they don't know where they what the Bible says. Where is it in the Bible? If the Bible says, where in the Bible? I want to read it. The Bible says, no, but you have no clue of where it is. Because you haven't cleaned your house. Amen. Tell you, neighbor, you got to clean your house. Yeah, clean your house. Amen. 
And here's the reality is you can't do it by yourself because the devil will tell you you're okay. There's nothing wrong with you. The devil will have you look at you and tell you you're good. But the reality is God has to validate you. The devil didn't create you. He can't validate you. The devil didn't create you. He can't check up on you. Why? Would you have a carpenter come to your house to check your plumbing? If he knows nothing about plumbing, you're wasting his time and he's wasting your time because he's talking but don't know what he's talking about. You need a plumber to check the plumbing. When you need to do an inventory of your life, of your mindset, you don't need to ask yourself or anybody, well, what do you think about me? I could care less what you think about me most days. I'm asking God, what did you think about me? When God said, listen, I, I said that one time, and God started talking about how good and perfect and wonderful I am, and how, how glad he is that I'm talking to him. I get so excited, I forget that anybody else is around. Really? Because he validates me. He reminds me that I am special. Amen. And then he said, oh yeah, by the way, we do have some work to do. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a little some cleaning up that can be done. Yeah. But I still love you. Yeah. I still appreciate you. Yeah. I, still, I'm, I, I, I still can't wait to bless you. Yeah, yeah I know you messed up yesterday and the day before that and the day before that. I know that, but it's all right. I died for your mess ups. All right. Amen. Amen. And God has said, if you keep talking to me, I'm going to talk you into uh, 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 being more uh, available to me. I'm going to talk you. If you keep talking to me, I'm going to persuade you. Yeah. I'm talking to me. I'm going to persuade you to be better tomorrow than you were today. And I'm going to help you. I'm going to strengthen you. I said, God, I thank you because you don't have to do all this. You ain't got to take time to talk to me. It's for way better than me. Come on. But you taking all this time. Sometimes I think I got God tied up. Ain't nobody talking to him but me. I know that's not the case, but I, I feel like he's giving me all his attention. Do you know how you feel when somebody giving you all their attention? You talking to them. They ain't looking at TV. Why they talking to you? Well, look at their phone while they talking to you. Yeah. I want you to turn to me and look at me yeah. and act like you're glad to talk to me. Yeah. 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 I want to, mm, yeah, mm, yeah. You know, you talk on the phone, and some people don't even have enough sense to know that the other person ain't even paying them any attention. <laughs> they only, you just yapping on the phone, they go, yeah, oh, really? Wow, mm, yeah, right. <laughs> Waiting on you to fix. You know, hey, hey, you know what? Somebody cut the door. I'll call you back. <laughs> so I'm trying to help him out because I, you know, I sometimes I leave, I, I put on a shoe that ain't, that I ain't got many shoes I have to tie up. But the ones I do, if I see a phone call and I know I, I want to deal with them right now, I go put these shoes on. I slip my feet in them. They ain't tied up. So when they get tired of talking and they ain't to really talk about nothing. And sometimes I talk to people because they just want somebody to talk to. That's part of me cleaning up me too. I'm, I'm, I'm washing my dishes. You know, just being patient with people. But when I really, really, really get tired, I say, listen, man, I, let, I, let, I gotta let you go, man. I need to tie my shoes. I'll call you right back. I ain't lying. I, I purposely put those shoes on every time. Anything to get off the phone. But we gotta be more mindful about cleaning our house. Amen. This is the only one we got on this side yeah. of heaven. Yeah. And the Lord is looking for a body that is healthy. Pray for yourself. Amen. 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 Before you ask people to pray for you, you pray for you. Amen. I very seldom ask people to pray for me because I don't know what their prayer life. Amen. You can come to church and you can look. I can talk to God all the time. I, I was trying to find a word I couldn't find, it, but you may look like you got it all together, but I don't know. People put a good front on their church. 
He's only here for a few hours. You know, and, and sometimes I'll talk to my brother, just as I know some folk like to smoke and they can't and, and they feel bad about leaving out the smoke. So I talk a little longer, see them to get antsy in their seats and they really want to smoke that cigarette. I said, Lord, help him, Jesus. Hold him, hold him. Hold him. Amen. Tell your neighbor, clean your house. Put your hands together and give God some glory. The Lord help you clean your house.